Good day, everyone. My name is Mr. Garth Reed, and I'm a student ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica. I'm also a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. Now we're back with a module three calculus one question in the KP Mathematics Unit One syllabus, where we're solving first order differential equations using the method of separation of variables. Now the question says, solve the differential equation dy by dx is equal to y squared sine x, given that when x is equal to zero, y is equal to one. All right, now there are two things that we need to find here. We first need to find the general solution, and then we need to find the particular solution. All right, so we're given dy by dx, is equal to y squared sine x. So remember that, remember that the method that we're using is the method of separation of variables. So we need to separate the variables, right? So we need to have all the x variables on one side and all the y variables on the other side. All right, so if I should write this now as dy is equal to y squared sine x, dx, I will be able to separate the variables, all right? Remember that dy by dx can be written as one over dx times dy, right? So that is the reason why I was able to multiply both sides of that equation by dx. So let me now divide both sides of the equation by y squared. So you will have dy over y squared is equal to sine x dx, all right? Now that dy over y squared can be rewritten as one over y squared times dy, and that is equal to sine x dx, good. Now the one over y squared can be rewritten as y to the power of negative two dy is equal to sine x dx, right? So recall from the laws of indices, in case you didn't follow the reason why you can bring it up as y to the negative two, recall from the laws of indices that if you have one over a to the power of n, then that is equal to a to the power of minus n. All right, good. So clearly you can now see that the variables are separated. We have the y variables on one side and we have the x variables on the other side, all right? Now at this stage, we can now integrate both sides of the equation, all right? So we can integrate y to the minus two with respect to y and we can integrate sine x with respect to x. Good. Now, you should recall the power rule. Recall the power rule of integration, all right? If you have the integral of x to the power of n dx, then that is equal to x to the power of n plus one over n plus one, all right? plus some arbitrary constant of integration, I'm going to call it k, right? And this is applicable when n is a member of a set of real numbers, except when x is equal to negative one, all right? So when n is equal to negative one, that formula will not work. But in this case, we can use the formula because or n here is negative two, right? So we can add one to the power and divide by that new power. So we will now have y to the power of negative two plus one, right? And we're gonna divide that by negative two plus one. Now, normally you would write an arbitrary constant of integration here, right? But whenever you're dealing with first order differential equations, we just write one constant, right? You can choose to 
You can choose which side you want to write it on, whether on the left side or the right side. I'm going to choose the right hand side. So this is equal to the integral of sine x. You should know that that is negative cos x, right? And I'm going to add my arbitrary constant of integration, which is k, right? You could you could use c as well, any letter that you wish. So y to the negative two plus one over negative two plus one. No. We need to find out. Now, negative two plus one is negative one. So what we really have is y to the negative one over negative one, which can be written as negative y to the power of negative one. And that is equal to negative cos x plus k. Good. Now, that negative y to the neg negative one can be rewritten as negative one over y. Right, so we can write y to the negative one as one over y. I have a negative in front, and that is equal to negative cos x plus k. All right, now if I should multiply both sides of the equation by y, I will get y is equal to negative one, and I'm going to divide that expression. All right, I'm going to divide that by k minus cos x. Now, this is our general solution All right that is our general solution now we need to find the particular solution so they told us that when x is equal to zero y is equal to one all right yes so they told us that when x is equal to zero y is equal to negative y is equal to one so if we should substitute these values now into the general solution above, you will get one is equal to negative one, right? And we're gonna divide that by k minus the cosine of zero. Now you ought to know that the cosine of zero is one. So we have one is equal to negative one over k minus one, all right? Now, at this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by k minus 1. If you should do that, you will get k minus 1 is equal to negative 1. All right? And if I bring the negative 1 on the right-hand side, I will get k is equal to 1 minus 1. All right? Now, 1 minus 1 is 0, so k is equal to 0. All right, so now we're going to substitute this k value into the general solution. So let's look back at the general solution. The general solution was y is equal to negative one over k minus cos x. k is zero. So what you will have is negative one over negative cos x, which is the same as one over cos x. All right, so let's write our statement here. So therefore, y is equal to one over cos x. Now you should remember from trigonometry that one over cos x is written as sec x, all right? So that is the particular solution. Let me write it here. This is the particular solution, all right? So that is the answer for this question, for this first order differential equation using the method of separation of variables, all right? My name is Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador for the University of Technology, Jamaica, and mathematics educator in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.